What is up, guys? Welcome back to Wild Rift University. This is Thing One, and today we have an excellent video for you today. Today we are going to be looking at my friend Babalith. He is a uh, Challenger level support, Vanquisher 1 level support main. Uh, he does play other roles as well. He's not a support only player, but uh, support is definitely his best role. He's a good friend of mine, super cool dude as well. Uh, has his own Discord that I'm also a part of as well. So if you're looking for a, a good Discord with people in it, check out his Discord chorus or his clan chorus. Um, we're in each other's Discords. Uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, Discords as well. He's a super cool guy, has a lot of uh, cool friends, and uh, really teaches people how to uh, get better at the game and brings community. Uh, kind of guy you want to know in League of Legends. But as you can see, he is the number three uh, Seraphine. This guy is really good at seraphine guys really really good uh this is actually how i met him uh last season we grinded together and he was basically the support that i always invited anytime i needed a support uh because this guy really knows how to play support uh he's also as you can see right here the uh number well, i think it's 37 yeah 37 soraka uh one of the best sorakas i know as well uh he doesn't play her all the time uh, Seraphine's really his go-to, but his Soraka is pretty stinking legit as well. And as you can see right here, he is also the number 15 um, Janna. He's also been higher on both Janna and Soraka, if I remember correctly, from speaking with him. Uh, but at the current moment, those are his rankings on these champions as well. Uh, now to kind of just go to his... Uh, player card to kind of give you guys a little bit more information on him these are his most played champions like i said definitely a support main as well and then as you can see right here super solid player super solid player uh 55.6 percent win rate tons of mvps s ratings a ratings legendaries uh great kda awesome kill participation and everything just a um overall super solid support player uh, very knowledgeable about the game. We were going to do a collaboration video, but he's a pretty busy guy. Um, he's doing some construction on his house, and he's also running a Discord, and then also trying to, I think, um, just rank up a little bit before the season's over. So unfortunately, we weren't able to really set up a time to collab the video together, but I'm just going to kind of go through the video myself, kind of tell you guys what I see, what I like. But I want you guys to see, like, how a challenger level um, support actually plays, like what it is they do versus like um, other players do, like what makes them good. So as you can see, he's not currently challenger. After he hit challenger, he kind of backed out and took a little bit of break and natural decay took him down, but he's pretty high up there. He bounces back and forth from challenger to grandmaster um, all the time. Uh, but now he plays, you know, pvps and other stuff like that and just hangs out with friends uh since he hit challenger at the beginning of the season uh so he sent me this video we're gonna break it down together guys uh, i hope you enjoy it so first thing i kind of want to go over here and what i notice about his team comp and i think his pick is so great um and so when you look at his champion pool he plays seraphine he plays soraka and he plays janna and in my opinion, Janna was literally the best pick um, in this one. And the reason why, there's there's a couple reasons. Uh, one, the shielding. They basically have a shield comp, which is super big, super strong. Um, they can shield Samara. They can shield Aurelia. Um, Yasuo naturally has a shield. Uh, Shen can shield people. Then they have the uh, disengage. Because if you look at their comp, their comp is hard engage. All they want to do is engage, engage, engage over and over again. Nasus just wants to get on top of you. Kha'Zix wants to get on top of you. Galio, Vayne, uh, Thresh. Their whole team is about getting on top of you. So if you fall behind in the game, Janna really is like one of the best supports at stopping people from getting on top of you. Also, even if you're ahead in game, she's one of the best supports with um, stopping or basically strengthening your team and keeping team engages up. Uh, stopping people from being able to win fights. She's super strong in the jungle, healing teammates and everything of that nature as well. So basically what I would kind of want to see in this game, just from initial thoughts, I'm wanting to see the Janna peel the team off, um, 
so that way teammates can engage and disengage when needed. Um, and then I feel like that's the way that basically you're going to win this game is by uh, focusing on those key things. So let's kind of jump into the game real fast and get started. Um, let's also talk about their, their matchup real quick. So they have a Vayne Thresh uh, versus a um, Samira and uh, Janna. And this is also a five man as well. So um, Minions have spawned. yeah, it's looking like this is either a five man or a three man, but I'm pretty sure it's a five man that they're going, if I remember correctly. Um, I feel like the Vayne Thresh should actually technically win this because Thresh should definitely be more aggressive to the Janna early as well. Um, because they're definitely way stronger at, at, at the initial fight. But let's kind of see how he plays this as well. I'm also really interested to see, because I, I am a, I do play support, I play all roles. Um, if you haven't watched this channel, I said I play um, all roles. I'm a jungle main though. Um, one thing I'm still working at though, is uh, learning how to use these new support items. I would not consider myself the best with it. So first thing I, I would kind of like to see is him um, probably toggle his shield a little better. I'm not sure exactly which ability he started first, um, but I, I do feel like you need to start um, shield first. But I'm betting he probably started tornado first, uh, simply because he's going against the Thresh. That way in case the Thresh engages, he can disengage would be my guess. Uh, but I don't really know. And unfortunately, we'll never know uh, because the um, he's level 2. The other thing that you'll kind of see is he wasn't just throwing abilities right away, which is also really important. Um, he's throwing abilities when needed. So, like, right here, that was a pretty good throw. Okay, let me pause and kind of explain this. So, that ability use was actually pretty decent. You know why? Because, like I said, this is Challenger Elo. So when they see the Janna's uh, tornadoes down, and he knew his jungler was right over there, it was pretty obvious that he was trying to set it up. When they see uh, the Janna tornado down, they know that they have a strong engage on them, so their chances of moving on in is way harder. So as soon as she threw the, the tornado, you saw their ADC immediately start to step up, and then the jungler immediately pushed in. Boom. Free kill. So, I mean, like... I'm not saying they only got that kill because the Janna um, used her tornado, but it's little things like that. Top players and good players, when they know abilities are down, they try to execute on them as well. So to me, that was that was um, a really good tornado. And I feel like it was part of the piece of, as to why they engaged. Uh, because Vayne's an engage ADC, Thresh is an engage support. Uh, they didn't know that the Aurelia was right there and Aurelia's typically don't gank within the first minute, 30 seconds. So I felt like it was pretty good. Here, um, I, I don't know if I fully agree with him putting the ward down right away. Uh, I think it would have been better to actually back with his ADC uh, just to buy some items. The one thing I will say that, you know, isn't horrible with putting the ward down right away is because, um, since they were kind of focused on minions and everything, uh, they wouldn't necessarily know that it's in there, so it gives them a little deeper vision, but not necessarily the best thing here. And then also a little bit back, he was kind of out of position, unfortunately, a little bit, which he had to blow his shield on him. However, they kind of hyper-focused on him a little bit, which allowed the ADC to kind of get in there and uh, get that kill. So that ended up working. Sometimes when the enemy team uh, hyper-focuses on a Janna, uh, the nice thing is, is because of her disengage, it allows them to win a fight. So like here, let's, uh, let's kind of go back and look at that again real quick. So here we go. So right here, she used, okay. She used her tornado, which kind of zoned the vein from being able to get back in. She thought she was going to get hooked. She shielded herself. She just missed it. Um, but it was understandable that she shielded herself. Now they're like in a great spot because the Vayne had to stay back because the tornado was coming, couldn't engage right away. And they're able to 2v1 this thrust. They got the slow out on him and everything. Um, and then Samira's able to kill them. Uh, kill the Thresh, I'm sorry. Get an alt off on there. Go in deep. Boom. Super good. So they, 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 they engage well on like a bad play uh, because... 
initially the um and this was actually really good too so he knew since he was pushed up having the tornado there in case he engaged uh was good they didn't have to worry about the um Kha'Zix ganking because they had the river scuttle and for the Kha'Zix to get in without vision he would have had to flash or jump over the wall uh which and then if he did that he wouldn't have really been a ganking threat either so having that preemptive tornado towards the um the turret uh, definitely a good play as well. So now they're they're up 3-0. So even though they're up 3-0, they still have to actually be careful because their team is kind of a late game team comp. Um, and their team fight isn't the greatest in comparison to um, theirs because that was a good shield. Um, hold on, let me just pause. So yeah, because their team fight isn't necessarily the greatest unless they're fairly far ahead uh, because... They're fairly squishy as a team, so Kha'Zix can really go ham on their whole team. And then Vayne, of course, late game, can destroy everybody. They have tons of CC for the Samira, for the Yasuo, and for the, um, for the um, Aurelia. So, like, and then also you have the Thresh. So, like, technically, like, team comp-wise, I would expect the red team to win. However, um, the blue team my friend's team his team actually is far more like snowbally and like chance of just absolutely running over the game because of the champions that they have as well so the winning of the game really for them is going to be based on like champion movements rotations executing proper team fights as well uh good good shield also Having the tornado as you clear is always good. Here, I'd also like to see some type of ward be going down. Th that was so good. So, like, when the... So, they focused on the Janna. The Samira immediately uh, went in and took aggro. And then um, the Aurelia went in right afterwards. I love how they... Um, also engaged over so this is like a perfect example of like understanding your strength so like here watch this okay so they hit the janna with a um a hook now a lot of players what they would do is immediately like oh crap they got the hook uh this janna is probably gonna die but watch what the adc does the adc like immediately goes in and is like hey i'm gonna go in and engage them now what see how the janna puts her tornado down right away they have to back up because if they engage on the Samira right here, the Janna's tornado is just going to knock them up and she's going to get free damage. So it's a perfect disengage. The jungler's coming uh, right away. So another perfect situation for them as well. Flashes. The Janna tornado almost hits the flash. They get some good poke damage. As soon as the um, minions come in, they go all in. And then the Janna flashes up. Blows a tornado, or I'm sorry, uh, her ult doesn't blow it. I'm not liking that way. But gets her tornado off, so that way the um, ADC can finish everything. It's just a uh, good play, good, good play overall. Here, I, I would kind of like to see them back. Um, they they got good objectives right there. They got some plating down, got some kills. So yeah, excellent. So right now, like the way that the Janna is playing, she's helping win these team fights for them. And because of like the play of the Janna, the uh, the ADC is getting fed, the jungler's getting fed as well. And so now, like, uh, what I also would, you know, they should have had a ward down at uh, Dragon a little bit sooner, but they had the River Scuttle, so not terrible. I do like that they're kind of baiting this out right now, just to try and see what the jungler is. And, and great bait right there. So uh, a lot of times what a lot of players don't do is they don't bait out the dragon. Uh, so like having some of your um, stronger targets like hide in a bush as a weaker priority target walks out and comes back in kind of will attempt or uh, tempt the enemy team to try and go after you. And then with a champion as strong as Aurelia and Aurelia is doing pretty good right now, it, it allows uh, her to get blow somebody up real fast. So it looks, and actually I do kind of like it. So as you see how they're kind of not going for the dragon immediately, 
And the reason why they're doing this, it's actually, it's super smart. and super, So if they engage on a full-on team comp, they will probably lose because of the amount of CC they, they have. There's a good chance they could lose around a dragon fight because of the Galio, because of the Thresh, um, that amount of CC that they could engage on them could really hurt them. But what they're doing is they're getting a pick because their comp works pretty well with picks. And then once they have numbers, because the Janna can disengage fights so well, now they go for, for the dragon. Like, this is so smart. Like, understanding how you win the dragon is uh, really key. Um, and they didn't over push it at all. So that was, um, I feel like, a really good dragon fight. And so what's happening now is, like, even though, based on their comp, because they're so squishy, the Vayne, the Kha'Zix could easily just start, like, crushing people, they, um, another really good preemptive tornado. So that tornado allowed them to, like, poke more because if they started to engage, the Janna could easily pop the tornadoes early to uh, help disengage the fight. So one of the things I kind of noticed, lots of really good uh, preemptive tornadoes. I'm glad that the Samara is rotating bot lane as well. So the other thing that I kind of like, sometimes uh, people... They stay with the uh, ADC far too long. Probably didn't need that tor or that alt to pop, but it is what it is. It's not a big deal. Um, Jen is such a great rotating support, especially with her passive. She gains increased movement speed and everything, um, or gives her her teammates increased movement speed. A lot of times, uh, Janna players spend too much time just babysitting versus uh, rotating around the map. Here was great though. The ADC definitely, definitely Alan overstayed. Um, but the Janna was doing the right thing of rotating. That wasn't really her fault. The ADC should have backed up uh, sooner. Now, okay, good. It looks like I say the Aurelia should be coming to help back up. And uh, shielding the turret is huge. A lot of times people don't do that with Janna. I'm not really sure why they don't shield the turret. Also, notice how she stopped auto attacking. Um, so often supports will, once the kill is secured, they just keep auto attacking, auto attacking, auto attacking. It's, it doesn't make any sense because all you're doing is risking taking a kill away from, uh, one of your carries. Once again, good tornado helps to engage. The vein probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have stayed anyways, but it's those little habits of doing, uh, definitely make it. So here I'd either like her to back or kind of rotate towards the mid lane, uh, either or backing. Smart that you go closer to the tower well so as you can see the game's kind of snowballing okay but it's snowballing because of smart play so like if you that think back to me. initial if the enemy team would have um engaged properly on the samara and the dragon they or i mean samara and the janna if they uh would have had wards before going aggressive super deep um they would have had a better chance of not dying early, which gave the uh, ADC an early lead. Not not the best flash, uh, because it didn't, but she's there making a difference. Could have probably gotten there without flashing. Excellent shield, save. To the this is what Janet does. She it just extends fights out so long. She she's such a good champion, man. So many people sleep on Janna. Um, She's probably, I would say, she's my best support. Right here, I'm not really sure what the Shen and the uh, Yasuo are doing. They definitely should have pushed the tower. Um, the Janna could have pinged there, but really it's not her fault. Uh, that was a free tower. They're going to get it anyway, so I mean, it's not like it's the end of the world, but they could have had it already and then been able to have uh, map pressure on other parts of the map. Backing, definitely a right decision, but... They were kind of like focusing more on gold. It would have been better to clear the tower and then come back and get the gold. Uh, technically, you're getting a little bit more gold by clearing those minions uh, than that tower because it's already 10 minutes into the game. But not even good. So, putting down vision, which is good as well. Um, I would love to see um, some like deep wards into the base as well. That's I know that's one thing a lot of players uh, struggle with especially support it is kind of hard to do with janna unless you have somebody backing you up because um she's just so squishy she can easily you have to you have to have really good positioning to play janna 
uh, because she's one of the lowest health um, health bar champions in the whole game. So uh, another thing that I like that you kind of see right there is I'm not saying in all situations it's the right decision, but uh, Janna actually does a lot of damage. And a lot of people don't realize that, especially if you uh, hit somebody with her uh, S2, it does a lot of damage. This right here, it was kind of a, a bad, so it wasn't necessarily his fault, like that player got caught out bot lane and he was trying to get there to help, but a little too late of a rotate, almost got himself killed. Uh, luckily, the Samira backed up. So like right now, you can kind of tell like they're not, fully sure what they're doing it's almost like they're just kind of waiting for the next objective um but as you see the gold the gold leads kind of gone. so like let's let's pause so i think a, lo a thing that a lot of players really struggle with is uh idle time so in between objectives being up for a place to fight um or in laning phase a lot of times people don't utilize their um, idle time very well. So as you saw before, they had like a 3K gold lead, but now look at it. It's, it's an equal gold, basically. It's basically equal gold. And equal gold, I give the advantage to red team. So that's why like getting that top tower was super important because like you're expanding your team's gold lead, spreading gold um, throughout the whole team. And here, as you can see, the whole team is like out of place. The only people in position right now is the ADC and the um, and the support. Shen being top isn't a big deal because Shen has alt and his alt is up, as you can see. But the um, mid laner and the uh, jungler should have backed a lot sooner um, in order to be at the dragon in time. Because Kha'Zix, the thing you have to realize, he's one of the fastest... Uh, dragon clears in the game because he gets his single target damage on here so i'm kind of interested to see how they're gonna uh, play this getting shielding excellent alt um the flash excellent see it's just janna extending the play extending the play unfortunately oh she did get away nice but th this is literally what janna does and see okay this is another great thing so even though she's super low, Janna has insane range on her abilities. She's coming back in to try and shield. So I love how even though she's really low right here, she's staying in a place to where she can still provide um, assistance. Grant the tornadoes to stop engages and everything here coming around, putting the preemptive tornado to help him disengage as well so that is like super risky everything that she did right there but because of spacing and positioning correctly she was still able to provide a lot of um like help to the team she uh was able to disengage the fight long enough back when it was just her and the adc in the dragon pit basically or by dragon to give her teammates time to get there. The Shen altered on the Samira. They kept her alive long enough. Uh, so that way the jungler and everybody could get in there. Once she got she got a great alt to get them off of some of her carries. Flashed away. Her teammates disengaged the Nasus off of her. And then instead of just backing because she was low. She understood that because I'm a Janna. I can stay really far away. Create disengage. Uh, for my team and shields in a place where there's no way the enemy team can get to me. And if they do go after her versus killing the carry that's in front of them, it'll allow their carry to probably kill them as she runs away and just puts the shielding and disengage on herself. So, super good. That, that tornado was almost perfect, just out of range. Um, good shield. Well, nope, stole a kill. Troll, report. Report. Um, another cool thing about this game as well, what he told me, he had 100% um, kill participation, which is really impressive. 100% uh, kill participation. I think he had one or two kills, I think he says, and um, zero deaths, I don't really remember. Here. 
once again, just providing shields. Fight, oh man, fighting a Janna in this corner is just, it's so dumb. So dumb, because literally he was able to use his ult, use his abilities, use his shields and everything on the team um, in order to, uh, right here, I, good, finally, I was like, hopefully somebody finally takes that top tower. Um, good. Okay. Yeah, pushing the mid lane right here. See, I do like this as well. Sometimes you you can be like, like there was a good spot to be aggressive. Like, obviously she can't kill the Kha'Zix, but showing presence and everything uh, definitely, like, discourages. Definitely did not need a flash there. I think that was maybe like a misclick, because um, I don't think under any circumstances uh, she would have flashed with basically full health. So now, like I said, the game is basically won. Um, and it kind of looks like a stomping, which it, it is a stomping. But um, here, let's do a quick little rewind. Real fast, just so that we can look at the uh, kills and everything. It is a stomping, but it's not a stomping because um, they're just so much better. It's, it's a stomping because of the decision making. The way they have decided to fight as a team, engage, wait for their win factors, look for picks before they go for fights, that's, that's what's causing them to win. So now look right now, she's 1-0-18, ADC is 6-3-7, uh, top laner is 1-2-10, and 10, which is great for Shen. I mean, he's not really going for kills, he's going for shielding and tanking. Uh, and the Yasuo is 8-2-2. Uh, two and two. But... If you're looking at a lot of these team fights, a lot of these team fights actually look like they're about to lose. But because of the Janna's shielding, the Janna's disengages, engages with her tornadoes, um, slows, and alts, it's turning team fights. Lots of those team fights, if you watch them, they were actually losing. But massive plays by the Janna that um, changed team fights a lot. People really sleep on Janna and how much she actually affects Destroy. games. And everything as well so now the game is basically won for them uh, all they have to do is not screw up uh, actually end the game because what you don't want to do is not end the game as obvious as that sounds uh, because they have a vein they have a thresh and they have a nasus so the late game scaling for their team is pretty crazy. I mean, they do have a Yasser and an Aurelia, so their their late game scaling is pretty ridiculous as well. Uh, but Thresh and uh, Nasus are two big scaling champions, so you always have to be careful. And they still have really great CC. And at full build, they'd be tanky enough to just kind of like tank their damage in a lot of ways if the enemy team builds correctly. Right now, they're so far ahead. They're doing exactly what should be. They're trying to force the game to end. They're uh, not just playing for kills, running around the map. They're looking to end the game. And that's something that a lot of players don't actually do. It's crazy that time. They don't look to end the game. Like, um, how do I finish this game? They just keep playing, trying to get kills and everything. Not actually uh, finishing the game. But right here, like... They knew they had the game, and they immediately pushed to the game. So, great gameplay, guys. I hope that you got to learn Victory. something from a um, top-tier player, a friend of mine. Uh, but look, I mean, just excellent stats. Three kills, actually. Zero and 21. 100% kill participation. Um, just made plays all over the map uh, to help the team win. Like I said, uh, this is all high... All these players in here are uh, high grandmaster, over 41 points, challenger players and everything. So super high elo. None of these kids are scrubs. It's, it is a ranked game as well. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something. I'm actually going to uh, do another video this week um, on a coaching where I'm going to have a, a Diamond 3 level player who's trying to learn um, Zed. And it's really great video. I kind of already watched it. We're going to actually do an interesting video where we uh, talk about the video together, watch it together, and explain his thought processes. Let him talk about why he did what he did. Um, 
you know, what was his thought process behind it? Tell him, I agree, I disagree, or hey, that was not a bad play, but you could have maybe done this or it was better. Or actually, you know, I agree with you. That probably was the better play. So uh, I'm going to be doing some coaching videos as well. As So if you're interested in maybe getting coached and having one of your videos coached for you by a um, high-level player, let me know and send me, put it in the messages. But anyways, guys, thanks for coming back to Wild Rush University, and I'll see you guys in the next video.